In this video, we're going to discuss Raoul's Law and Ideal Solutions. So let's define some terms. We have PI, the partial vapor pressure of I. So that's the vapor pressure of component I above a solution of which I is one of the components. We have PI star, and that is the pure vapor pressure of I, or what the vapor pressure would be above a pure liquid of I, which is in equilibrium with the vapor. And we have chi i, which is the mole fraction of i. Mole fraction is like a measure of concentration, but in terms of the number of moles of i present in the solution relative to the, the total number of moles in the solution. So chi i is just equal to the number of moles of i in the solution divided by the sum over the number of moles of every component in the solution. So if you have one mole of substance i, and there are 10 total moles, then your mole fraction is 1 tenth, or 0 0.1. And this will always be a number which is between 0 and 1. So Raoul's law, which is true for ideal solutions, just says that the vapor, partial vapor pressure of component I is equal to the mole fraction of component I times the vapor pressure of the pure, pure liquid of I. So the pure vapor pressure of I times its mole fraction. So this leads us to the definition of ideal solutions, which is kind of an analog to ideal gases, somewhat, although there are differences, which we'll discuss. So an ideal solution is a solution which obeys Raoul's law. It obeys the Raoul's law for every component, for every component I, at all mole fractions of every component. So for every, every component which is in the solution, at every mole fraction from 0 to 1 for that component, if a solution obeys Raoul's law for every possible value of every mole fraction of every component, then it is said to be ideal. So just like an ideal gas, um, most solutions are not ideal. So when is a solution going to be ideal? Well, we know, in a, we know a gas is ideal when the particles are not interacting with each other, when the, vape, when the pressure is very low. So for ideal solutions, when does a solution behave ideally? A solution behaves ideally or obeys Raoul's law under all circumstances if, one, we have all components, so every molecule, every uh, different component in that solution are of similar size and shape. So kind of the topology of the molecules looks similar. They're about the same molecular weight. They're about the same size. It's about the same shape, etc. And number two, if all of the intermolecular forces are the same uh, between like and unlike particles. So the, intera the intermolecular interactions between like components, say I and I, are very, very similar to those between unlike components, I and J, where I and J are just representative of different components of the solution. So for ideal gases, it was true if they didn't interact with each other at all, so all of the molecules' interactions are the same. And this is going to be true for solutions if all the liquid particles in the solution are approximately similar to each other and they interact in similar ways. Because liquids do interact with each other very strongly and they're always very close to many different liquid particles, but as long as these interactions are qualitatively similar to each other, then this will start to approach Raoul's law and, and become a nearly ideal solution. Okay, so for previous videos, we're going to have our chemical potential of our solution phase that I derived in the previous video, so let me write that down. So we have chemical potential of component I in the solution is equal to chemical potential of pure liquid I plus 
RT log vapor pressure of component I, partial vapor pressure of component I, divided by the pure vapor pressure of liquid I. So it depends on the vapor pressure what the chemical potential of component I in solution is going to be. So if this is ideal, then it's going to obey, obey Raoul's law. Then PI over PI star, well, we know uh, PI is just going to be chi I times PI star. So that's going to be chi I times PI star over PI star. So these two pure vapor pressures are going to cancel with each other. So this term here in the logarithm, PI over PI star, that's just going to be the mole fraction. So if you have an ideal solution, you get this nice simplification that we're going to have that our mole fraction, our, our chemical potential for I in the solution, is going to be chemical potential of the pure liquid of I plus gas constant times temperature times the natural log of its mole fraction. And again, that's if it is an ideal solution, if ideal. Okay, and we know that from the gibbs duhem equation that we derived in a previous video, we know if one component behaves ideally, then the other will as well. So if we know that one component obeys Raoul's law at all possible mole fractions, then due to the gibbs duhem equation, we can relate those chemical potentials to one another, and we can show that, in fact, if one of them behaves ideally at all, be, obeys Raoul's law at all mole fractions, then all components will obey Raoul's law at all concentrations, and the solution will be ideal. So this allows us to make the following kind of plot, which we're going to see a lot for the remainder of the chapter, where we're going to plot the pressure versus the mole fraction of an individual component, so chi i. The scale is going to go from 0, which is none of that component, all the way up to 1, which is pure i, pure component i, the pure liquid. Let's pretend it's just two, it's just two components, uh, one and two. So in fact, let's not make this I, let's make this chi one. So we're gonna have two components and what is gonna be the vapor pressure of this? So we know that the total vapor pressure, if it's an ideal solution, is just gonna be chi one, P one star, partial vapor pressure of pure liquid I plus chi 2 P2 star vapor pressure of component 2 and let's also pretend that for this case P2 star is less than P1 star so component 1 has the higher uh, partial vapor pressure of its pure liquid so we have this here and we can we know that if it's just a binary mixture, we know that chi2 is equal to 1 minus chi1, because the two of them have to sum up to 1, the total number of moles. The mole fraction of all the components must add up to 1. So if we substitute that in and then rearrange this equation here, you can arrive at the following result, that the vapor pressure of a solution <coughs> as a function of the mole fraction 1 is going to be the vapor pressure of component 2 plus chi1 times p1 star minus p2 star. So what this is going to give us is the following graph. So let's make some marks down here. Let's mark this is p1 star. This is p2 star. We're going to have our total vapor pressure. 
it's going to go up linearly from zero mole fraction of one up to a entirely mole frac uh, zero mole fraction for component one up to a mole fraction of one for component one. And according to our behavior for ideal solutions, what we're going to have is for component one, you're going to start at a vapor pressure of zero, and then go all the way up to a vapor pressure of P2 star. And then for the other component, for chi 2, we are going to start at P1 star and then go all the way down to a vapor pressure of zero as this solution becomes pure component one and zero of component two. So this is what it would be called a pressure composition diagram for uh, an ideal solution. And these pressure composition diagrams are going to be what we're going to be looking at uh, going forward for various uh, substances uh, and seeing how they behave, whether they are ideal or non-ideal.